Then my friend talk about bit of it. Nigeria has finished him off. I just got him now. He was laughing. They don't work. He enjoyed it though. Who is he? He enjoyed the criticism. Hello, good evening, and welcome to Road 2023 on Symphony. I am Victor Irwele. The political landscape in the country today seems to be enjoying a renewed optimism given what is happening across political lines. Even the response of Nigerians to the continuous voter registration exercise also signposts the fact that Nigerians seem to be saying it is now or never. It looks like a movement is sweeping across Nigeria, and this movement is being heavily led by the youth. But whether at the end of the day their dream will be a reality or not remains to be seen. And that's how we welcome you on today's edition of the program with focus on can the youth swing the votes in favor of P2B of the Labour Party. I will take a short break, look at some developments in the polity, and then we come back on the program. I have the honor to forward the underlisted ministerial nominees for confirmation by the Senate. One. Henry Ikechuku Iko, Abia State. Two, Umana Okon Umana, Akwaibom State. Three, Ekuman Kama Joseph Nkama, Ebony State. Four, Good Luck Nana Opia. Imo State. Five, Umar Ibrahim Eliakub, Kano State. Six, Ademola Adewole Adegorie, Ondo State. And seven, Odum Udi, River State. Copies of their curriculum vitae are attached here with. It is my hope that this exercise will receive the usual expeditious consideration of the distinguished members of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Please accept, Mr. Senate President, the assurances of my highest regards. Signed, yours sincerely, Muhammad Ubuhari. Another letter from Mr. President. Dear distinguished Senate President, transmission of the business facilitation, facilitation miscellaneous provisions. Transmission of the business facilitation miscellaneous provisions bill 2022 for consideration. Pursuant to sections 58, subsection two of the 1999 constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended. I forward here with the Business Facilitation Miscellaneous Provision Bill 2022 for the current consideration of the Senate. The Business Facilitation Miscellaneous Provision Bill 2022 seeks to promote the ease of doing business in Nigeria by amending relevant legislation. While hoping that this submission will receive the usual expeditious consideration of the Senate, Please accept the Sungu Senate President the assurances of my highest consideration. You are sincerely Muhammad Ubuhari. Letter from the People's Democratic Party, PDP, the 
President of the Senate, Your Excellency, confirmation of the Senate caucus nomination of Senator Philip Tanimu Aduda as Senate Minority Leader. The above subject matter hereby refers the leadership of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, is pleased to confirm to you the nomination of Senator Philip Tanima Aduda as the new Senate Minority Leader. The nomination of Senator Aduda is for the replacement of the vacant seat of the Minority Leader created by the defection of Senator Einaya Abaribe to the All Progressives Grand Alliance, ABGA. Please kindly accord Senator Philip Tanima Aduda all the necessary cooperation arise due the office. Accept the assurance of my highest, my esteemed regards. Signed, Senator Samuel N. Anyau, National Secretary. The ruling party cannot even select a vice president. So they are creating political Pace. What do you call it? Political placeholder. I don't know where you have placeholder in politics. Is that you have the person or you don't have the person? So this afternoon, I thought we should meet. The last time we met here, before the primaries, I thought we had made progress. Because we discussed in a very convivial atmosphere. Members of the State Working Committee who were complaining that, oh, we had to take care of them, they were adult standings, we met and gave them everything they said they were being owed. But alas, we went for the primaries and you all saw what happened. We are not going to, this afternoon, try and lament and go over what has happened. But when you go to war, Ukraine and Russia are fighting. But are they not seeking peace? Yes. You go to war so that you can seek peace, you can get peace and live in peace. This afternoon, I have just come to gather the leadership of this party in Edo State to say, please, I beg you, let us have peace. Because the only thing that can stop us from clenching the presidency is internal wranglings. And you've seen how it has played out in Ekiti. And if we don't curb it, it will continue to spread. And peace can only be attained when the leadership of any organization insists that there must be peace. Because your followers are ready. Whatever you say they should go, they will go. Whatever you say they should do, they will intensify it and do it. So if we say we should now sue for peace and ensure that there is peace in our party, we will find one. This is politics. And so whatever wranglings, whatever quarrels, we must try and resolve politically. No court of law can adequately and fully resolve a political issue. It can never happen. It has never happened. So going to court day and night is not going to bring peace. It's not going to resolve our issue. We still need to sit across the table and talk about the issues and resolve those issues. The important thing is for us to be in power, to, for us to be the ruling party. We must look at our collective interests, first and foremost, not our own private interests. Because if it is not good for all of us, it would not be good for me. And that, in my view, is at the bottom of the crisis we're having in our politics.
It's a critical moment in Nigeria's social political life. A moment when Nigeria needs knowledge, experience, courage, sincerity. When Nigeria needs journalists primed to influence positive decisions. Benga Areleba unscripted, primed to ask the critical question. I'm not afraid to say that our problem in Akiti has been caused by the activities of our immediate past governor, Fayoshe. Fayoshe ruined the pace before he left office, insisted in putting one that worked with him as the as, the, uh, as, as our candidate then, with all kinds of struggles and all that, they could not persuade him to do otherwise. He ended up on election day, sprawling on the floor and crying. And that did not help us anywhere. Put that to rest. The build up to the choice of a candidate in Akiti was a big struggle. All kinds of meetings, all kinds of peace interventions, all kinds of things, until we had, they had to push away Shegmoni, who went to SDP that was not, not, not known there. The outcome is, 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 is clear. There is no state governorship election that the National Party has not constructed a, 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 a what do I call it, a, 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 a campaign, campaign council. There was none for Aikiti. There, was no, there, was no, there were no rallies there, nothing. Nothing happened there. And all that caused, that caused the problem was a fire shade to put himself as a presidential candidate in order to garner you know, some people to vote as, you know, as delegates in, uh, in Abuja. So for delegates in Abuja, Ekiti was sacrificed. So it's, not a, it's, not, it's, it's nothing new, and I think we have seen it. And I think the party at national level must address this matter and not allow it to be a constant. And I think the, the, the country must know, and the party must know, if people misbehave in the party, no matter what level of the party, whether it is at the highest level or the lowest level, there must be disciplinary action taken against them. If that is not, if that is not done, then please, we are not... We are wasting our time because we have a big battle to fight for the presidency. And all we have done is that we shall get the presidency. And to get the presidency, we must not push these things under the carpet. I congratulate our new vice presidential candidate, governor of, Edus, of, of Delta State, <laughs> His Excellency Fai Okoa. It's a critical moment in Nigeria's social political life. A moment when Nigeria needs knowledge, experience, courage, sincerity. When Nigeria needs journalists primed to influence positive decisions. Benga Areleba unscripted, primed to ask the critical question. We need to invest in you. We need to invest in the youth. The youth, everybody, do you know why people retire when they are 60, when they are 65? Because they're no longer as productive as they are when they're the youth. So investing in the youth is investing in inching of growth of your country. They are the ones that will produce the prosperity of the country. They are the ones who have the energy, the talent, the everything to move on. Every company you're celebrating in the world today is built by the youth. People don't build, hardly build any company when they're old. Those who funded the biggest corporations in the world, they did it when they were youth. Go to them. Today, the Amazons, the Apple, the Facebook, Twitter, 
How these are found by youths. And they are the ones driving everything. Your youths don't have the same privilege. They don't have what it takes and everything. What are you going to do about power? Like you just asked him. Again, you're not doing anybody a favor. You have to provide it. Because it helps the engine of your growth. Have you ever seen government here say they, that they, they have a problem with revenue? Have you ever heard it? Huh? No. You're not following our government. Government complains anyway. We don't have enough revenue. They even say they don't have a debt problem, they have a revenue problem. They say it every day. You haven't seen our government say tax to GDP is low. Yes. Have you heard it? Yes. You know why your tax your tax to GDP is low? Because you have people who are not working. Would they pay you tax from where? Are you going to tax on employed people? Are they going to kill their mother or father? Go and pay you tax. I have the honor to forward the underlisted ministerial nominees for confirmation by the Senate. One, Harry Ikechuku Iko, Abia State. Two, Umana Okon Umana, Akwaibom State. Three, Ekuma Nkama Joseph Nkama Ebony State. Four. Good luck Nana Opia Imo State. Five. Umar Ibrahim Eliakub Kano State. Six. Ademola Adewole Adegorie Ondo State. And seven, Odum Udi River State. Copies of their curriculum vitae are attached here with. It is my hope that this exercise will receive the usual expeditious consideration of the distinguished members of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Police accept the Senate President. All right, uh, those were the voice of uh, quite a number of them. They are videos that we allowed you to enjoy. Uh, but the last video was the Senate President Ahmad Lawan reeling out the nominees that the President has submitted to the Senate for confirmation to replace the ministers that have resigned and, of course, new appointments in the Senate. I'm not alone in the studio this evening. I'm being joined by the National Coordinator of Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, Comrade Emma Omubiko. Emma, good to have you. Thank you very much. Welcome, Nigeria. Finally, the president has uh, renominated seven persons or appointed seven persons to uh, take over from where some ministers left off after the presidential primaries. A lot of people are already asking questions. Is it going to take another seven months to replace these persons? Yeah, it's quite unfortunate that the president showed his, uh, his um, uh, can I say, very slow uh, methods of issuing his appointments. The, the president has not been very decisive in the last seven years. It takes him a lot of time to make appointments, something that ordinarily shouldn't take 24 hours or some few minutes because the data of every Nigerian 
uh, expert in so many fields are really valuable. We, white people, even, even strangers that don't live in Nigeria, they have a way of going to the appropriate apps on the internet to search for uh, qualified you know, personnel in different areas. Uh, you know, there's even a particular uh, app, I think LinkedIn, uh, you know, where, where they upload. Sometimes you're not even the one that is going to do it. People that know your qualifications and everything, we just upload it. So it's not difficult to know uh, who is who in the country. It doesn't take so much time. But Mr. President, it takes him like ages. And uh, at the end of the day, he, uh, he will appoint uh, the third 11. He will not even appoint the first 11. Even after taking all the time in the world, he will still appoint those, those same, uh, it will, you see the same job for the boys. Not even, he will not go for the best in any state. He will go for the ones they just get to him by the governor or by somebody who is very close to somebody in Azorok. You know, no proper vetting, no proper examination, interviews, or what have you. No proper recommendation is done. So I, it's quite unfortunate. The last seven years, it's been the same kind of uh, story. And in fact, it's not something that has been regular because we've had only one appointment or two, you know, for the whole of the first tenure that he was there. He used the same kind of people with all the problems, with all the inefficiencies, with all the, uh, you know, collapse of the economy. The entire facets of Nigeria's economy was almost, almost dived. You know, well, the president was not moved at all. He wasn't, he was all over the place in the whole world. I don't know, he was going for medication, uh, medical tourism, or he's going somewhere, attending one meeting, one meeting in France, another meeting in South Africa, another meeting in Guinea. It's just, you know, there's no, it's not, it's not been very meticulous. All right. Also, looking at uh, the National Assembly, if you like, an aftermath of uh, the presidential primaries, a lot of persons are not. Uh, happy with development if we are looking at uh, the ripples or the kind of defection that we are seeing. The All Progressive part, uh, part Congress, the ruling party, is also having their own fair share of the defection, unlike when it used to be the opposition uh, defecting. Now, the lawmaker representing uh, Castina North, we had three people from the APC moving. Remember, of course, the uh, Senior Minority Leader Nina Baribe also left the People's Democratic Party for the ABGA or Progressive Grand Alliance. And now Philip Aduda is now the new minority uh, leader in the Senate. These are just some of the developments shows quite a number of senators or members of National Assembly will not be returning after the primaries of their various political parties. I don't know whether Nigeria is a loser or the individuals are the losers? I I think Nigeria is the loser, either they return or they don't return, because we spend quite a humongous amount of money to run the National Assembly, and their output is quite uh, insignificant. It, it doesn't go a long way in improving the economy of the country. They, even when they make tons or dozens of laws, the implementation, the oversight is not effectively carried out, it's just like it's, it's a bonanza that I've come to Abuja to do. So I think we really have to sit down, go back to the drawing board and recalibrate our democracy, how we want this democracy to work. The democracy in Nigeria is not, it's not really functioning properly. It's not really working. You know, it's not working because uh, it's, it's capital intensive and we don't maximize the uh, huge investments we put into it. You spend a lot of money maintaining certain people that are less than 500 people in Abuja, a lot of money in a year, billions of Naira you spend maintaining this number of people in Abuja and they end up bringing out very poor quality, uh, uh, you know, legal frameworks. Even the law that should have even favored them. They made the law that ended up, uh, ended up, uh, you know, uh, being used themselves. as a witch country. Yeah, even excluding themselves as delegates in their own party primaries. That shows you that they are, they are not very, they're not very efficient in the National Assembly. So we really need to, Nigerian, we need to really recalibrate. We, we need to really talk about 
we need to reform the kind of democracy we practice in this country because this is not how democracy is practiced in other climes where we borrowed the system of government from. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to mention on Greece the, where democracy originated, but at least even the US where we borrowed the presidential system of government and the United Kingdom of uh, United Kingdom where we borrowed the parliamentary system and mixed the two up. And we mix the two, and we're messing up the two. Yeah, it's, it's not actually a very good thing, you know. It's not a good thing. All right. What some of the videos we also saw, we saw that things are not well with the ruling People's Democratic Party. The, sorry, the opposition People's Democratic Party. We saw the governor of Edo State, Godwin of Basike, lamenting there. We saw board, uh, member of the board of trustees of the People's Democratic Party talking about uh, Tommy Kimi. He also. Uh, explaining why the PDP didn't do well in the AKT election. So, and for some persons, this is a party that is striving to take over power in 2023. Given what we've seen, given what we've heard, do you think the People's Democratic Party is really prepared going to 2023? If we want to be very fair to Nigeria, and we want to be very fair to ourselves, Nigerians are not supposed to return either APC or PDP. Those two parties have failed. We need to we need to try other other set of individuals. In fact, we need to really vote individuals now, not parties, because basically, even when you want to talk about other parties that are so dear, beginning to be so dear to some certain uh, subset of Nigerians, you look at their what is their ideology even. You know, People Democratic Party and our Progressive Party, both of them are claiming to be progressives. You know, they're neither left nor right. You know, that's just the thing that that brings them together is the contestation for power. They want to seize power. They want to win political positions by all means. And when they get there, they have no way of building up the system. What is the what is the blueprints, economy blueprint that the PD, uh, PDP has that is significantly different from what the APC have experimented in the last seven years? What is so different from what uh, the current president has implemented in the last seven years that is fundamentally that's the, uh, that is fundamentally different from what PDP implemented in the last 16 years? The difference is not so much. The only difference is just that this one we say, you, you know, we, the other party, the other government invested Huge amount of money to try to fix the electricity power sector it didn't work for 16 years but you spent seven years and it still has not worked so you can see that both parties actually they they they, they really don't have the solutions to the problems they actually hit on nigeria because most economic issues we have in nigeria are man-made are created by these same uh, characters that are in this Particularly, these two political parties that have dominated the political positions in Nigeria. If we want to go by political parties, I don't think that any of them deserve to, to be back by merit. Uh, we Nigerians need to be given the chance to elect the people they want. But it's quite difficult because in the last seven years, the party that has been in power spent all these seven years weaponizing poverty, creating poverty, spreading poverty, making a lot of people to become so poor that all it takes for a politician to win election is to give one person 5,000 Naira. It has actually dehumanized the, the dignity of the Nigerian uh, persona. So it's quite unfortunate. It's quite unfortunate that uh, these parties have not really added value to our democracy. And Nigerians actually have to ask themselves questions. What do we really want in 2023? All right, we'll go on a short break, and when we return, we once again listen to what uh, Tommy Kimi, board member of the People's Democratic Party, had to say about uh, former governor of Ekiti State, Ayo Fayoshi, and the elections, and of course, a letter from former Minister of Niger Delta to underscore the fact that all seems not to be well in the People's Democratic Party. I'm not afraid to say that our problem in Ekiti has been caused by the activities of our immediate past governor, Fayoshe. Fayoshe ruined the pace before he left office, insisted in putting one that worked with him as, the, as, the, uh, as, as our candidate then, with all kind of struggles and all that they could not persuade him to do otherwise, 
He ended up on election day sprawling on the floor and crying. And that did not help us anywhere. Put that to rest. The build-up to the choice of a candidate in Akiti was a big struggle. All kinds of meetings, all kinds of peace interventions, all kinds of things, until we had, they had to push away Shegmoni, who went to SDP that was not, not, not known there. The outcome is, 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 is clear. There is no state governorship election that the National Party has not constructed a, 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 a campaign, campaign council. There was none for Aikiti. There, was no, there, was no, there were no rallies there. Nothing. Nothing happened there. And all that caused, that caused the problem was a fire shade to put himself as a presidential candidate in order to garner you know, some people to vote as, you know, as delegates in, uh, in Abuja. So for delegates in Abuja, Ekiti was sacrificed. So it's, not a, it's, not, it's, it's nothing new, and I think we have seen it, and I think the party at national level must address this matter and not allow it to be a constant. And I think the, the, the country must know, and the party must know, if people misbehave in the party, no matter what level of the party, whether it is at the highest level or the lowest level, there must be disciplinary action taken against them. If that is not, if that is not done, then please, we are, not, we are wasting our time because we have a big battle to fight for the presidency. And all we have done is that we shall get the presidency. And to get the presidency, we must not push these things under the carpet. I congratulate our new vice presidential candidate, governor of, Edus, of, of Delta State, <laughs> His Excellency Fai Okoa. All right, that underscores the fact that uh, the PDP seems to be having a little bit of problem after the Ekiti elections, there were those who alleged that uh, the failure of uh, the presidential candidates of the party and some other big wigs to failure to have come to Ekiti and campaign for BC Kola Wale, their candidate was responsible for why he didn't do well. And uh, Tommy Kimi's position seemed to be re a reaction to that uh, comment from those who felt the absence of the PDP hierarchy was responsible for why the PDP did not win. Well, we need to add it to a letter from former minister of the Niger Delta, Gosde Orubebe. I hope that name is a very, very significant, rings a bell. Remember 31st of uh, March 2015. If you remember that date, then you remember why this name can never go out of the Nigerian political lexicon. He wrote to the People's Democratic Party resigning his membership of that party. Uh, well, he said he will respect the party and not say so much. But just to let you know, uh, an asset from that party uh, tells you that something is seriously not well. I salute and commend the governor of River State, His Excellency Yeson Wike, for his effort and gallantry at the primaries. Posterity will be kind to him when the history of the party is written. There are lots to be said, but out of respect for the party, I leave some stories untold at this time. My belief in the sanctity of Nigeria is unshaken, and I will continually work for her progress and development, even if it is through another route. I thank you, sir. I wish you all the best. Yours sincerely. Elder God's Day Peter Urubebe, C O N. Comrade, uh, from uh, Tommy Kimi to Urubebe, both of the same party. Now, Urubebe is a former member of the People's Democratic Party. There is something we can adduce from it things the center can no longer hold, or some persons are disenchanted, especially this particular paragraph making reference to yes, some wicked. Uh, well, I think the PDP itself has a very serious problem. 
PDP uh, has in this constitution the zoning formula that the all the elected positions in that party will be zoned according to uh, the two uh, major uh, uh, you know characters, the south and the north. And the north has always uh, in, in 2019, I think, and uh, I think 2015. It was similar to 2015, 2015, 2015. So the PDP has never respected her own book, the law setting up the party. So you have democratized rascality, democratized impunity, and now you are trying to look for somebody to blame, blame Fayoshi or blame uh, Nguike or blame whoever you want to blame for. The party itself, structurally and in terms of functionality, the party needs to recalibrate. Let me use that word again. They, they need to reset their brain. Something is wrong with the PDP as a party. Because if, for instance, I'm talking about the decision of the southern governors, the met, the man who has now accepted to be the running mate to a northerner was the one who organized a meeting in Delta State and they said PDP has to zone this presidential uh, position to the south. They didn't stand by their words. So they don't, they're not people of principle. They don't stand by their words. So that is why the center cannot hold because when you you don't have the faintest regard and respect for the letters and principles of the laws you have written down, the constitution of any community, let me even call it, if it is the smallest community, let's say it's uh, uh, around this logo. Around this logo is quite big. It's a very big town. <laughs> let's call it a very a clan meeting of Hindu entity. And you have a constitution written and affirmed and approved, and it is written and approved during the meeting, it is sacrosanct. The constitution of the PDP is very sacrosanct. You don't just just play football with it. I said, there's nothing like uh, you know zoning in the PDP constitution. When the constitution is available to even your no members, I know a lot of uh, provisions in the PDP constitution, as much as any committed member of the PDP does, just like the same way I know a lot of provisions in the uh, extant constitution of the APC, and you're saying your constitution, your constitution matters. If you don't respect your constitution, it, there will never be peace. Then, secondly, you you had a zone that have supported that party for over donkey years since PDP started. The Southeast has always given her all, and people are saying, "Look, oh, you guys are making a very terrible mistake. You don't put all your eggs in one basket. You don't vote PDP all the time. PDP, PDP. It is for PDP that the Southeast." has been skimmed out of things since the last seven years by the current government because they said the current government said we, we the southeast gave gave him only five percent and we gave pdp at uh, 95 percent and when it it is supposed to be the turn of the southeast even the delegates of the pdp from the southeast betrayed the southeast so something is definitely wrong with the party with the constitution of that party it's just like something is it's maybe a lot of karma is working against them, sort of, you know. So, apart from uh, when, when the problem of PDP in Ekiti is not that they didn't campaign, the problem of PDP in Ekiti is that they didn't bring enough cash to bribe the voters because PDP Ekiti uh, state election was procured. People saw it, people were there. Some of our members were there, they observed the elections. It was, uh, it was sold and bought. There was no election in the kitty. It was like a trading, uh, you know, center. And Anik has to really do something about this buying of votes, bribing of voters. It is a very critical question that has to be done. Maybe that is the answer of APC to the emergence. I mean, to the emerging revolution of Peter B's, uh, 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 you know, bunch of youths. Maybe All they right. don't want to use money to try to see how they can destabilize that revolution that is going on now. All right, let's let's just go on a short break, and when we return. Will now be facing the issue of the day. Can the youth swing vote for Peter Obi in 2023? It's a critical moment in Nigeria's social political life. A moment when Nigeria needs knowledge, experience, courage, sincerity. When Nigeria needs journalists primed to influence positive decisions. Benga Areleba Unscripted, primed to ask the critical question. We 
need to invest in you. We need to invest in the youth. The youth, everybody, do you know why people retire when they are 60? When they are 65? Because they are no longer as productive as they are when they are the youth. So, investing in the youth is investing in inching of growth of your country. They are the ones that will produce the prosperity of the country. They are the ones who have the energy, the talent, the everything to move on. Every company you're celebrating in the world today is built by the youth. People don't build, hardly build any company when they're old. Those who founded the biggest corporations in the world, they did it when they were youth. Go to them. Today, the Amazons, the Apple, the Facebook, Twitter, all these are founded by youth. And they are the ones driving everything. Your youth don't have the same privilege. They don't have what it takes and everything. What are you going to do about power? Like you just asked him. Again, you're not doing anybody a favor. You have to provide it. Because they have the engine of your growth. Have you ever seen government here say they, that they, they have a problem with revenue? Have you ever heard it? Yes. Huh? No. You're not following our government. Government complains anyway. We don't have enough revenue. They even say they don't have a debt problem, they have a revenue problem. They say it every day. You haven't seen our government say tax to GDP is low. Yes. Have you heard it? Yes. You know why your tax, your tax to GDP is low? Because you have people who are not working. Who they pay you tax from where? Are you going to tax on employed people? Are they going to kill their mother and father? Come and pay you tax. The future of our politics in this country is changing. I don't know how you are, whether you are closely watching what is going on. The level of disenchantment with the existing parties. I'm sure. In all our homes here, we have so many people now who call themselves obedience. I don't know whether you have them in your house. Just ask them, all those children, where are you, which party are you for? They say obedience. <laughs> Do you understand? They don't want us. They, do, they are not talking about APC or PDP. They are looking for alternatives. And they are men, they are much, much more. You see all of them queuing for PVCs now. They are not looking the direction of APC or PDP. They are looking for alternatives. If we don't make our party attractive, I do not know what will happen in the next elections. I share that optimism that the future of our politics is changing and the youth are looking for alternatives that can account for why there are quite a number of Nigerians, majority of them youth, trooping out for their PVCs. Just maybe to give you an idea, based on INEC updates on the continuous voter registration, quarter four, week five, as at uh, 16th of May, fresh registrants we are put at uh, 9.238 million. Completed registration was put at 5,847,751. 
those that registered online we are 2.584 million why those that physically registered we are 3.261 million in all the mail number in this exercise was 2 million 903,003 why the female had 2.942 million persons with disabilities we have 48,252 and then the youth population we had 4 million and 45,520 now 4.05 million youth registering ahead of the 2023 elections and you can be rest assured the number will also increase and quite a number of students is also instructive to say that quite a number of students we are part of those who registered and the age bracket fall between 18 and 35 and that's why we are asking can the youth swing the votes in favor of b2b they are looking for alternatives they are disenchanted and of course a member of people's democratic party have acknowledged the fact that they are not looking in their direction of the pdp or the apc they are looking for alternatives do you think they can swing the vote in favor of p2b in 2023 yeah it's quite um the answer to that question is quite it's self-evident quite obvious that if the youth are determined to take a position or a decision and uh pursue it to a logical conclusion there is the possibility that there will be a peaceful revolution you know when they mention the world revolution the president of the country will be so scared when uh, Shambu, uh is sure uh, that american guy the guy that was based in america that they have even not allowed to travel any longer for the past how many years they captured him in Abuja here. so when the word the revolution is mentioned they think it's something that is quite a revolution the revolution is not all about uh bullets you know you know when you start exchanging bullets that you talk about revolution revolution means you now want to have just like apc apc is supposed to have even institutionalized revolution because the the, the 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 central message of apc was change but it appears that the kind of change apc brought to nigeria in the last seven years is what mr president told us that he thought he was saying something very metaphorical when he said apc will take us from top to bottom the apc will be from top to bottom so apc has taken us from top up to bottom so the youth are the ones that are the victims of the ineffective leadership the ruthless leadership insecurity you have in nigeria insecurity is not just all about fiscal insecurity or national insecurity of high crime rates terrorism and the rest of them or lawlessness the insecurity that people don't even talk about is joblessness poverty poverty is spreading at a very poverty is ballooning unemployment is 33 point something percent according to the national uh bureau of, of statistics which is even a government agency so 33 points uh something percent of nigerians that are supposed to be working the age bracket of those who are supposed to be productive are within that age bracket of the youth they are not working that is why when you see the problem of irregular migration a lot of nigerians are out of this country taking very irregular routes dangerous routes are dying you know following the 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 the, 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 the the Mediterranean, uh, you know, see, that in the Sahara Desert and the rest of them, they, they spend a month just to cross to uh, Libya and try to risk their lives to get to Europe. A lot of a lot of Nigerians want to leave the country because things are no longer working for them, and the older generations that have crippled the economy of this country, that have devalued the politics of this country, are still the ones that are holding all of us hostage. Don't want. That's what. That's why they are afraid when a young man not too young but somebody that made his message resonates with the youth is somebody that knows understand how the economy should be uh, uh at least should be rebuilt from bottom to top not from top to bottom you have you build a nation from bottom to top not top to bottom you know so they now saw the emergence of a, a p2b who is who used to be one of them but who wasn't allowed to compete lawfully because they know he's not the kind of person that's going to use dollars to buy delegates he has the money but he doesn't believe in 
spending money just that way, just to influence votes or whatever. He is not in that mode. So they're not very comfortable having this kind of person. It's like, uh, I want to give you a secret. When I was in the senior seminary, training to be a priest before I left, you know, uh, everybody knows who is who. They, we know those who are not actually following the, 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 the ideals of the priesthood. So when you see those, when those kind of people <laughs> see the people that are deeply committed to the faith, the people that always uh, say the chaplain, they say, oh, it's my not it's my to, you know. You know, So that's how it is. So Peter B is like a monk among wolves. So they're not very comfortable. But now that he has left, they're still not comfortable. He has left you guys to buy your delegates, to win your election the way you want it, to disobey your laws, the constitution of the party that stipulates that elective offices should be zoned. He said, we don't want it again. They want everything. We want everything democratized. Let everybody who wants to run, run. In fact, even if Buhari's younger son, uh, Buhari small son, want to contest on the PDP, let him come and contest. There's no problem about that. And we're talking about equity. We're talking about making everybody to have a sense of belonging. And they say, it doesn't really matter whether it's Muslim, Muslim, TK. It doesn't matter. What matters is we want uh, the best. How, we want the best. Oh, I say the best is not available in the other part that have been marginalized for as long as possible. So the youth can actually change the system and they're going, they're going to change the system if the independent national election will actually remain faithful to her independence. If INEC is not going to capitulate and collect bribes and manipulate the system and allow the system not to work, the e-transfer of results is very okay. The major problem I see with that is the collapse of this, they, are, they, they, they experience it, I think, in the number election, where so many of these, they are, uh, uh, where you go, you cannot even find your picture, or you cannot, you will not be, they, they won't be able to, yeah, they won't be able to upload their data. So, you have your data, you, I mean, you have your PVC, and the machine they are bringing there cannot upload your data. It doesn't make sense. So, the system has to be really properly coordinated, synergized, so that every Nigerian that has a PVC should be able to vote as at when do, then they have to find a modality for eliminating bribery, influencing See, voters with money. So, but basically, it is true that the youth, if they want to change the system, and it is in their self. The only people among the youth that are making the money, the little, little money they collect, are the ones that do this Yahoo Yahoo. And the Yahoo Yahoo business is not even going for them because the agency of government that was set up to, they're supposed to be catching big thieves in government. It's no longer catching a lot of big thieves in government. They allow the big thieves to operate a little bit. They just catch one of them that is not really complying, is not really respecting the, the, the status quo. They're now concentrating on Yahoo Yahoo boys. So even the system is against those kind of crimes that are committed by the youth. So the youth should really... Forget about crime. Put your energies together. Put your minds together. Governize the vote. You have the vote. You have the energy. You, you don't complain that you're going to spend hours trying to get a PVC. If you don't spend hours, is it your grandmother in the village that, that, that should spend, spend hours? Are you not a young man? You spend, struggle and get a PVC on the day of the vote. Do not collect. I don't support the idea of say collect their money. It is your money. It's not your money. Any money that is given to you by a politician is not your money. If you collect the money from a politician. And somebody tells you somewhere that collect your money is our money they collect. How is it your money? How did you give it? Did you give the police money? He's a thief. The, the politician that is giving you money that he stole is a thief. So you don't you don't get encouraged to collect the money from a thief. Under the law, a person that collects a stolen item is also a thief. So why is anybody telling us that? And that is that is the reason why you have a lot of youths collecting money, uh, collecting money in the kitty, and some of them foolishly voted for the person they collected money from. You know, initially, INEC allow people to be going with their phones. How they collect the money is that they will stop and tell you, this is here, I voted for you, then that's okay. You have satisfied the terms of our contract. They pay the money. Now, there's no way of verifying whether the person you are paying 5,000 plus or not. You understand? So it's like, now it's a guesswork. But unfortunately, a lot of them that believe in that idiotic idea that collect their money because it's their money, they will still go and still vote for the person that has given them the money. They say, by the way, this man didn't give us much. This man gave us only 4,000 naira. This man gave us 10,000 naira. Why should anybody give you money to vote for the person? Do they understand how much is going to pass through the hands of the governor of a kitty state? This new governor that has been sworn in, 
This man is not going to control anything less than one trillion naira in the, in the next four years, and he has paid you five thousand naira. And at the, at the end of the day, in your villages, you're not going to have street lights. You're not going to have the funny uh, heist men that are killing everybody. Will not allow you to rest. You're not going to have good roads. The police will, will not get good pay. There will be there will be no police. The only police they have is the police that go with uh, chairman, uh, governors, and the rest of them. You go to a village, you don't see police. The only police you see maybe once in a while when you commit when you see. A petty thief that still sees you at Kasava, you take him and far away. Police stations in a lot of townships and villages are not present. You understand? So the youth, it is in their own self enlightened interest that they should say no to anybody that is bringing money for them to vote for the president and reject these so called parties with structures. The structures we should go for now are the, are the structures of transparency and accountability, not the structure of rigging elections and looting our money and taking your wife to yeah some of them the wife of the president has been living in dubai for as long as seven years the man who is jumping around as a candidate of pdp he's a perpetual candidate of pdp since 2015. he doesn't live in nigeria he lives in dubai his all his family members are in dubai or us and the rest of them is that the kind of person you want to vote for are you not supposed to vote for somebody who understands that's why we have a lot of there are a lot of issues in this country the the like the peculiar problems we have in Igbo land is because a lot of those who go there to become governors are not people that live in Igbo land. There are people like us that live in Abuja all our lives. We've been living in the north. If you manage to grab little money from the federal system, you say, oh, I want to be a governor. Then you rush back to the east and become governor. When you're elected, you live perpetually in Abuja here as the governor of uh, Imo state or governor of Anambra state. You don't stay in the east, so you don't understand the problems, the peculiarities of those people. So they really have to find a way of changing the system. The youth should Take over this government democratically, govern themselves. But there are those who think that uh, this is a, a marathon, not a sprint, and they believe that uh, the enthusiasm of the youth to the win out in the days ahead. It's not possible. It's not possible. The youth have suffered a lot. Why I think so is because there is hardly any family now that does not have. If you see any family that does not have one person in Europe, maybe that family, that family has to really go back. And if they have a Fagambaka in their place, then you got to ask <laughs> what is happening with your family. Virtually every family in my own place, in Imo State, have one person in Europe. And most of them, they don't travel through the regular means. The people that travel through the regular means, maybe through scholarships, or maybe their parents were able to have enough money to pay for their school fees, then they travel from there, they make good results, and they're able to return, they're, to return them, they stay, are not many. So when you ask a typical Nigerian guy who is hustling, Nigerian guy from Edo State, each time I travel to Europe, I see a lot of people from those states. So many of them, a lot of them. Most of them were mechanics. Most of them were all these capitals in Abuja that some of that we were using to fix our flats and the rest of them when we came into Abuja newly. I saw my mechanic in U UK is doing quite well. So many of these adult people are in UK. They they don't just jump into UK and start making money. They suffer. The weather, you have to work like a machine. You understand? Is that the kind of life they should live? Are they not supposed to fix this country so that the youths don't have to travel and go to Europe and begin to pick uh, pick uh, refuse in the railways? There are basically works that are quite very lucrative in the UK that the, the British uh, citizens do not do. For instance, you don't see any British citizen pick refuse. I've never, since I've been going to Britain in the last 25 years, I've never seen a British citizen go to the street and pick this kind of refuse. Because they have people that pick refuse for them, like this... Uh, um, uh, uh, Abuja Environmental Protection Board is one of the most lucrative jobs you can do. But you don't see British citizens, they call it like, you know, it's all these uh, Eastern Europeans, Ukraine, all these people from uh, Yugoslavia, Croatia, and all these small, smaller, smaller, poor European countries that are there, that are doing the job, and Africans, maybe students, master degree students, and the rest of them. Can't we make our country better so that we begin to have, for instance, in football, why? Is Nigeria a football loving nation, and yet we don't have a single team that can attract a player for Europe? Why can't we make Nigeria in such a way that our league will be as competitive as the British Premiership? So that we'll be able to buy the likes of Ronaldo, mm. buy the likes of uh, the likes of uh, Rudiger. They uh, we may not afford Messi. You, you, <laughs> know, we don't afford Messi, you understand? So why can't we buy all those those kinds of people? All right. That's why they have to really change these guys who do not understand. For instance, the Minister of Sports is a young man. But the Minister of Sport has effectively killed basketball due to politics. 
All right, let's just, uh, we have to pause here uh, because there's still so much to talk about, but uh, want to believe based on what my guest is saying that the youth have all it takes to turn the tide in 2023. They've been moving like a movement and uh, I'm sure anybody taking them for granted will be doing that at his or her own peril. The governor of Edo State, Godwin of Berseke, acknowledge that that in every family you must have somebody who is obedient i don't know whether you're obedient <laughs> well we're still watching but i think Obi is out of the whole lot of them they have now jumping around the one the president Obi has the best kind of blueprints for us we're still watching them you know but i if, if election is going to be held today i'm going to vote for b yeah, so the best. you're obedient as well yes, at yes. least for now After, yeah. all right that's the size of the package today we keep our fingers crossed and see whether those who say it's a sprint, the youth are engaged in a sprint, and that the race is a marathon, whether they will be right or whether they will be wrong. Once again, I want to thank my guest, Comrade Emmanuel Omubiko, National Coordinator, Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, who has been uh, sharing his thoughts on can the youth swing the pendulum for P2B come 2023, and all those who are behind the camera and behind the scene, pressing the right buttons for us to reach you. On behalf of everyone, I'm Victor Irwele, thanking you for being part of the show. Tomorrow is another day. Have a pleasant night rest. Good evening. The future of our politics in this country is changing. I don't know how you are whether you are closely watching what is going on. The level of disenchantment with the existing parties. I'm sure in all our homes here, we have so many people now who call themselves obedience. I don't know whether you have them in your house. Just ask them, all those children, where are you, which party are you for? They say obedience. <laughs> Do you understand? They don't want us. They, do, they are not talking about APC or PDP. They are looking for alternatives. And they are, men, they are much, much more. You see all of them queuing for PVCs now. They are not looking the direction of APC or PDP. They are looking for alternatives. If we don't make our party attractive, I don't know what will happen in the next elections.